What does the Cold War and an annual salary review have in common? Probably not much, except the principles that were used in the Cold War can actually help you in your next negotiation. Stick around to find out. We're all eventually going to be in a moment where we have to enter a negotiation as an underdog. And while it might seem tempting to accept your fate, let's try to use maths to flip the balance in our favour. Specifically, we'll use game theory, which if you're not familiar with, is just a branch of mathematics that focuses on strategic interactions and decisions. Leave a comment below on a tough negotiation you've had and maybe this video could help. Let's set the scene. It's coming up to my annual compensation review with my employer. And I want to demand a pay rise, but in the past this has proved quite difficult. And it's pretty obvious why. My employer and I have completely opposite goals. I want to get as much as I can for the value I provide the company, whilst my employer wants to pay me as little as possible to increase their profit. This is what's known as a social dilemma, where the reward to a player in a game is higher if they don't cooperate. In a simple negotiation I have two options, either I can demand a pay rise, or I can accept what my employer offers. And likewise my employer has two options. They can either be willing to compromise to my potential demands or simply play hardball. We can see why this negotiation is difficult for me, by applying game theory. It's clear who the two players are, and in game theory players have to choose a strategy, in this case it's the options I listed earlier. And finally we have to consider the interactions between a combination of these decisions, and the reward each player receives is their payoff. If we collect all of this together we can represent the negotiation on a payoff matrix which is a nice way of looking at the combination of strategies. Working through the combinations, first we can see if I'm willing to accept the offers and my employer is willing to give a rise, then I'm slightly more satisfied with my small pay rise, but it does represent a cost to my employer. My employer on the other hand could refuse to give me a rise and if I accept it, then they save some money and I lose out. So what if I decide to make a stronger demand? Well if my employer is compromising then I get exactly what I want, and this might even be a larger amount than the first negotiation. Now we have almost completed our matrix, but there's just one complication. It's in the final case. If I make demands and my employer refuses to meet them, it leaves me in a poor position, both financially as well as in the eyes of my employer. While my employer in this case does not spend anything extra, if I'm not willing to back down we end up in a conflict. If this does arise and I decide to quit or my employer dismisses me, well there's a cost to both of us. To an employer it's the loss of a single worker's productivity out of the entire workforce, which is smaller than the cost it would represent me losing my livelihood, and it's not worth the risk. But what can we do to actually make this work in my favour? Well I came up with two solutions. The first involves modifying the game. A pay rise while it represents a cost could actually be palatable. The cost of replacing me with another employee is not zero. They would have to search for, try to attract and subsequently train someone from scratch. So if I can make my pay rise represent a similar amount to the cost of replacing me, it makes it easier to give me a pay rise. This strikes a balance but first requires some understanding of the job market as well as my employer's position. I could easily hit this balance wrong. There's actually a better solution and it borders on the edge of brinksmanship. This is the art of practice of pursuing a dangerous policy to the limits of safety before stopping. And here we draw inspiration from the Cold War, specifically the Cuban Missile Crisis. In this tension between the US and USSR, we have the latter seeking to place nukes on Cuba within striking distance of the mainland US. And of course the US will be trying all they can do to stop this. But striking the balance wrong here, and we wouldn't be watching this video. Just like any other negotiation, this potentially catastrophic geopolitical nightmare can also be represented on a game matrix. With the US choosing between doing nothing and threatening a conflict, and the USSR choosing between turning back or continuing as they planned. Let's have a quick look at the game. If the US does nothing and the USSR turns back, the game will probably repeat eventually. And in the cases where the USSR refuses to turn back, then either a war will break out, or the weapons will reach Cuba. So the only acceptable option for the US is to threaten action, but they would hope that the USSR does not respond. This is extremely risky, so how can we avoid some of the risk? In reality the US enacted a policy that shifted the game. They used a naval blockade to prevent the USSR ships from arriving in Cuba. This left only two outcomes from the USSR. The US's actions here shifted the negotiation from a simultaneous game to what we call a sequential game. This is where one player acts before another. Either the blockade is disregarded and this triggers a world ending conflict, or we see what actually happened. The Soviet Union simply avoided escalation and no nukes were placed on Cuba. Here the US made it publicly known that they were willing to risk the worst possible scenario, and in doing so they put the onus on the USSR. Shockingly we can learn a lot from this and we can apply it to our own salary negotiation. The first step is to make my decision known before we start negotiating. I can simply announce I want a pay rise or else I quit. This limits my employer's options so they have to weigh exactly the cost of my pay rise and the cost of replacing me. This prevents me from receiving a subpar offer. However while brinksmanship might sound appealing, 
the risk is too great for me. I do not want to end up unemployed, so what if I just change the worst case scenario to also be in my control? I just need to find an alternative job to act as a safety net. This removes all of the potential downside to myself, and it means that I can shift the game to be played on my terms. Now even if I miscalculate the cost of replacing me, I have a safety net of another job offer to fall on. However, we have to tread carefully, because repeating the same game makes you predictable and may not be received well. This is because in repeated games, outcomes can diverge pretty drastically. Sign up for notifications to find out when that comes out. Salary negotiations are quite popular in the news right now, but why are we seeing more strikes in certain countries than others? Find out why in this video. And if you made it this far, consider subscribing and thanks for watching.